All right, welcome back to Angry River Outdoors. Um, in this segment, we're gonna show you guys how to grind up some venison and some pork and some pork fat and uh, make some summer sausage. Um, I do it down here in my basement. I got myself a little like at home butcher shop set up here where me and my son usually process our meat and make uh, beef jerky and uh, summer sausage is another favorite. And that's what we're gonna do today. Uh, we're going to start the process of uh, making homemade venison summer sausage. So stick around, check it out. I'll give you guys some tips. Like I said, I've done it a couple times, but uh, yeah, this time I'd like to share with you guys and uh, give you guys maybe some little tips and ideas if you want to try this at home. All right, we're here um, down in the basement, like I said, and we're getting ready to get our, we got our uh, venison scraps that um, basically, if you butcher yourself, this would be all the scrap meat uh, that you don't want to make uh, your steaks or your chops out of. So this would be the stuff that you either want to grind up um, and make burger out of, or what we're going to do is grind it up with some pork um so here i got pork fat that uh just we get pig we get a pig every six months or a year and um when i get the roast i'll trim off some of the fat from the roast if i'm making like pulled pork or something and save it and freeze it for making sausage um i got some pre-ground pork here from the last time we made sausage that was left over that i just put in one pound packages and froze um cut up a couple pork hocks um, and then I got a pork butt as well um, I don't know if we're gonna use all this pork to mix with this but we'll kind of figure it out as we go along here but these are the two components um, right now uh, for making sausage sometimes you can put 20% pork to your um, venison it all depends on how fatty you want it or how lean you want it um, I found about 20-25% pork to to uh, venison ratio is a pretty good um, percentage for making sausage if you're gonna smoke it yourself and all that. So um, yeah, now we're gonna get this all kind of cut up and we're gonna get the grinder ready and uh, we're gonna start running some meat through the grinder and uh, getting this stuff mixed up and ready for it to be seasoned. All right, here are um, the components to my grinder. Um, I just got a Carnivore series, Cabela's grinder. Uh, I think this is the number 12 um, size um, grinder. Plenty good for what you need for grinding up for making uh, ground ground uh, venison or sausage. Um, it comes, this is the components to grind the meat. Um, it also comes with attachments to stuff the meat later into the uh, casings, which we'll show you uh, once we season the meat and everything. So the first attachment um, to this is the collar. Um, I would suggest you put this in the freezer um, at least 12 hours beforehand. You don't have to, I just found that it really helps. The cooler that all of this is, um, when it's going through the grinder, the better. So you wanna refrigerate your meat you want to um, keep it cold and you want to try to grind it in steps to keep it chilled. Um, so you don't want to rush through it or, and let your meat get warm because that's what causes it to get gummy and doesn't really give you a good product at the end. Um, this is the 
the piece that goes into uh, the shaft here to squeeze the meat through to, to uh, help with the grinding process. Um, you can buy buy this. Oh, sorry, you can buy this silicone lubricant spray at Cabela's. Um, what it does is just you know help everything slide through uh, without clogging up. Um, you want to jam that in there nice and tight. Make sure it's nice and sturdy. Then you got your cutting blade or your cut, cutting wheel. Um, that then goes in. Sorry, wrong way. That goes in there next. And then uh, I have a couple series of grinding grinding wheels, I guess you can call them. Um, the bigger one is a 10 millimeter. The smaller one is a seven millimeter. Um, I've tried to grind smaller than the seven millimeter. I do have, I believe it's like a five millimeter or four and a half millimeter. Really tough to get the fat and stuff through this size grinder. So I stepped it up this time and I went out and got a seven millimeter one. So the first grind, we're gonna go through the venison by itself with the 10 millimeter. And then we're gonna run the pork by itself through the 10 millimeter. Once those two separate things are ground up, then we're gonna put in the seven millimeter grinding cutting wheel and we're gonna run both of them through together to incorporate it um, into one product. Uh, so like I said, we're gonna put the 10 millimeter blade in, just basically slide that on there. And then we got our tightening wheel, uh, so it's threaded. Um, just really make sure that you take your time when you're doing this. You don't want to screw this on there crooked um, and rip your threads out. And you don't need to s tighten this at all super tight. Uh, just basically hand tight um, and give it just a little more just to make sure that it's snug in there. Um, the other thing is this is a cooled collar that comes with it that goes around um, the feed shaft of the grinder um like i said freeze this beforehand definitely 12 to 24 hours before um and like i said one of the key things to the whole grinding process is keeping the meat cool uh when it's running through here so it doesn't get all gummed up and uh cause um gumminess and not like i said not a very good end product um then we're gonna put the the holder or the bowl up here um which basically is where you feed your meat through and then we got a little uh, stick here to help push this through and it's it's got this um, blocker on it I guess is what you could call it so it only goes deep enough so you can't uh, get it caught in the grinding wheel down inside of there so uh, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna plug this in and uh, me and Oliver are gonna get set up to start grinding this venison Now that we got our pork and our venison ground up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the pork and we're gonna add it to the venison. Remember, this is just our first grind. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda, we're almost gonna restart now. Um, Cause I like to recool this meat off again. So what I like to do is just take it, obviously with my clean, washed hands. I like to mix this all up. Um, just give it a preliminary mix. I can still feel the meat's pretty cold, but I want to reset the the cut or the grinder. I want to clean all the stuff, get it back to square one. I want to get my collars back in the freezer for a while. I'll probably throw this meat in the freezer for a while after I combine it, you know, for probably a good, you know, half hour, 45 minutes or an hour. Just let it sit and everything kind of cool back off again, which is always good. Like I said, when you're 
trying to make sausages uh keeping your grinder stuff like the collar and the made made main uh main point there where the grind goes through uh chilled as much as possible so i'm going to throw this meat back in the freezer uh and i'm going to take this part and clean it and uh get it back in the freezer as well and then we'll uh put our seven millimeter grinding wheel on there and we'll run this back through and then uh, that should almost be to the point where we're ready to get seasoning on it. Anytime you're making meat products, raw meat, or like what we're doing, sausage, I just wanna make sure your area's clean when you're done. All right. Um, because we also do a lot of uh, our own grinding of meat and stuff like that, I do have um, a vacuum sealer, which is a really awesome investment if you're gonna get into doing your own meats. If you like this video, stick around and hopefully once we harvest some deer this fall and winter we'll be able to show you more videos on how to make hot sticks and beef jerky and all that stuff too so a vacuum sealer is definitely a good investment if you're going to get into making your own meats and uh, doing your own stuff with venison which is great and also teaches our young kids and our young hunters uh, the value of not only harvesting an animal but uh, doing that animal justice and making delicious meals and uh, utilizing as much of the the animal as possible um, so you do it as due diligence um, when you harvest it. All right, we're back. Uh, we just pulled the meat out of the freezer. Um, I don't know, about 45 minutes. Just kind of let it recool. finished up our uh, second grind looks real good um, that's seven millimeter cutting wheel I would suggest it's just about perfect for this application um, way better than the smaller wheel I was using previously got clogged up a lot more and here's our finished meat now uh, now what we're gonna do is uh, I prefer this uh, High Mountains home sausage making kit. Um, so our first instruction here is to do 12 ounces of water. We'll get about 12 ounces of water. Uh, we'll pour that water in here. And what we want to do is just sprinkle some of that in there. So here's the seasoning, smells good. So let's dump that in there. If it feels a little dry, then you might wanna add a little bit more water. And then one of my little secrets that I like to do is, uh, That's cold. <laughs> I like to throw some traditional balsamic vinegar in there. All right, so we're gonna hit uh, this with a cover and we're gonna throw it in the refrigerator and we're gonna let this sit for 12 to 24 hours um, and then we're gonna see you guys back here all right welcome back it's been 24 hours uh, we've had our ground up pork and venison with our seasoning marinated in our refrigerator for 24 hours now we're gonna get to stuffing it into the casings so we're gonna show you over here what we're gonna use this time. <clears throat> I just laid out all the three different uh, size tubes that this comes with. Um, the kit that I got with the grinder um, and stuffer from Cabela's, but this tube here would be used for making your hot sticks or your 
um, your uh, smoke sticks, whatever you want with those. And then this one will give you a little bit fatter of a, of a, um, of a hot stick if you want as well, or you can use this to stuff ground beef as well. Uh, this is the tube that we're gonna be using to stuff our casings for our summer sausage. Uh, it's the bigger one uh, and it's really, uh, puts through a lot of the meat to fill the casings quickly. And then uh, this is our new little handy dandy attachment that we're gonna get asphyxiated onto this guy, which uh, then this goes over the top. You'll see it. We're gonna put it together and show you guys how this works. Uh, of course, we've had our other pieces in the freezer overnight, um, chilling and getting as cold as possible along with our meat, uh, which has been sitting for 24 hours. Then over here we have our casings. Um, basically what I recommend is just get some hot tap water and let them sit in there for probably 15, 20 minutes just to kind of get a little bit softer. When you pull them out of the package, you'll notice they're real stiff and firm, but like I said, just soak them in a little hot water and it really helps them uh, um, loosen up a little bit for when you're stuffing. Oh, another thing is, is uh, when you get your casings, uh, they come with this extra long string. One side is tied off and one side is open. Uh, what you wanna do is you wanna clip this with a scissors and then you use this extra piece that they give you here to tie off the other end when you're stuffing it. And you also don't wanna stuff these all the way full because you gotta have room at the end to tie these off. So we'll show you how to do that once we get everything set up and we start stuffing the casings. That's the basic assembly for the stuffing of the sausage. You, what I'm gonna do is open up this first casing. And I'm gonna just start shoving it over the tube until it gets as far as you can. And then you just wanna leave that there. Turn this bad boy on. Um, now that we're done with this, obviously we're going to do all of our cleanup now and uh, we're going to stick these bad boys back in the refrigerator until tomorrow, um, which then we'll uh, get the smoker out and we'll get these bad boys smoking. So that'll be our next segment. All right, welcome back. Um, day three. Um, I'm on my deck with my middle son Sam. He's gonna help me get the smoker going. Oliver's off at a baseball game, so he's not here to help me. Um, so basically what I got is a Weber pill smoker um, that I'm gonna use to uh, smoke this sausage. Sammy's gonna help me get this going. Um, basically I start off with just some regular charcoal and a in one of these little chimneys um, also I love these little Weber fire starters they come in like a pack of 24 um, they're really awesome for starting that's the ripped up package I gotta get some more but I love them uh, with the chimney and some charcoal it like really gets this going hot um, I always start with a charcoal base and then after the charcoal gets going in the chimney then I like to go with the the lump oak hardwood blend uh, natural lump charcoal. Um, that's what I put in to uh, after the regular charcoal gets really hot and burned down. That really helps ignite that lump charcoal and get it going. And then basically whatever kind of uh, wood chips you want to add. Usually when you're smoking. Um, summer sausage in that thick casing um you don't really need to do wood chips just the lump charcoal is enough because all you're really doing is cooking that meat um not a lot of the smoke flavor penetrates through the casing so wood chips aren't necessary um i would just go with charcoal and um lump charcoal when you're doing it and it usually works pretty darn good so we're gonna get this thing fired up and 
start smoking some summer sausage. Set your chimney right on top of there and let those burn and that should get the charcoal going. Going. Oh, there we go. Alright, so we pulled our sausage out of the fridge from when we stuffed it yesterday. As you can see it's been in the casings, nice and firmed up. Now what I've done is I uh, went downstairs and grabbed a couple of my horses and I put my top grade of my smoker on it to serve as a hanging rack so I can hang these sausages and fit them inside my smoker so they hang. I think I've done them, done them both ways. I've, uh, I've put them in the smoker and laid them flat and smoked them. Um, the first time I did that, it, they didn't turn out right one side was a little bit harder than the other it didn't have that like hard texture on the outside and the nice soft inside like a normal summer sausage would so then i came up with the idea of taking zip ties and uh hence why i told you earlier in the video to leave this extra piece or extra of this casing because what we're going to do is wrap this around the grate and then we're going to zip tie these and hang them like this from the smoker and that's how we're going to smoke them inside this uh, pill smoker that I have. If you have a smoker you can do them flat but I would just suggest you uh, if you lay them flat like this just you know halfway through the smoking process turn them and rotate them around so they're not all on one side. person job to hang the meat on the rack um, it's not the easiest thing to do um, we struggle a little bit with it but hey whatever it, you you got to work sometimes you got to work hard to reap the benefits so we got we got them hung on the rack outside um, right here I got a meat thermometer um, I got a six probe run it's probably a little extensive but Sometimes I smoke four to five different meats, so I like to be able to probe them differently. And this will, this one will give you all six different temperature readings on one thing. Plus, you can hook this up to your uh, phone. So you, uh, which actually that's a great benefit to this because I'm gonna throw these on the smoker. I'm gonna stick the thermometer in, and I'm gonna hook up the app. And I'm going to go to the baseball field. I'm going to watch my son play baseball while these things are smoking on my deck. And I can monitor the temperature right from my phone. So, I don't know, pretty handy dandy technology. Um, it affords you not having to stand around your smoker. Plus, I don't know, this Weber pill smoker that I got, man. I tell you what, you get the charcoal going, going in there. And, I mean, I've smoked briskets for freaking 12, 14 hours. And... Man, I've only had to tend to that fire probably a couple times during that period. It just stays steady at that right smoking temperature that you want. And uh, just really holds that heat in there and just performs great. So really cannot complain about that product at all. Very awesome. So fill this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to insert this probe into one of these sausages and try to figure out about where it is halfway. I'm going to dump this out. All right, we just got back. Um, my smoker is done and ready. As you can see, it's pretty much stays at that steady temperature, about 200, 215. And my thermometer is reading now 163. So we're we're good. Gotta do is pull that probe out. Look at that fresh meat, boys. You can smell that. It smells so good. Here's our uh, finished product. Um, it's still, I'm gonna leave them in the casing and put them back in this tub and put them back in the refrigerator overnight. And then after that, we are going to cut them in the 
three pieces or four pieces and uh, right. bust out our shrink wrap or our vacuum sealer and we're gonna vacuum seal them and put them in the freezer so that'll be the last step but we're getting close can't wait till tomorrow when we can break one of these open and try it because the way it good. smells man alive mm, I wish this thing had smell of vision because you guys would be going crazy right now so we will see you tomorrow with the finished final product Welcome back to day three of the Summer Sausage Project. So what we've showed you so far is the how we grinded everything up and seasoned it all, but now we're gonna show you how to vacuum seal and freeze it all. So over here we already got some pre-cut vacuum seal packages for the summer sausage. And here we have all five of our summer sausage. Well, well we already five ate of one. The six, yep. <laughs> we've already eaten one. <laughs> well we're gonna cut them into four, so we're gonna cut them all in half and then cut those halves and halves. And then we'll just show you how you want to freeze them. You don't want to freeze them crooked, you want to freeze them a certain way, and so it vacuum seals right, and we'll show you all that. So now that we got our uh, meat all vacuum sealed up, what I like to do is just grab one of these, I don't know, it's almost like an old laundry sack, but they're just these mesh bags. And uh, I don't know, I buy them and put pork in one and beef in one and venison in the other. So they're all kind of like separated in the freezer. If you have a chest freezer at home, um, kind of compartmentalizes everything. It makes it easy to find in your freezer um, instead of digging around for like individual packages of this stuff. Happy, happy, happy. Hard work pays off when you can fill the freezer with things that you make on your own. Um, nothing like it. It's awesome. For, well, a year. It's usually all about that last. I give it away a lot. Let people tell me what they think of it. So it's another thing I enjoy. It's kind of in my blood. Uh, like I said, my grandpa owned a meat market back in, uh, started in 1939. It's so my grandpa Becco, he did, made his own sausage, Italian sausage. Really good, so. Okay. Well, that's a wrap. Um, we tried to show you from grind, stuff, season, cut, shrink wrap, your own summer sausage. Um, really good uh, way to incorporate what you do in the woods with your family, uh, your kids, go out there, harvest an animal, show them what to do with it afterwards. There's a lot more to the sport and hunting than just getting out and harvesting animals. And, and it's fun, believe me, we all enjoy doing it. But afterwards, if you can show the next things that you should do, like proper care of the meat, what to do with the meat, how to utilize it, and make different things with it that your family will enjoy, you know, for a long time. So I really enjoy doing this kind of stuff, especially now that my kids are getting old enough to help me. As you can see in this video, the two of my sons helped me in this one. Uh, I, that really just makes me feel good that my kids enjoy the same things I do, and hopefully this will translate to uh, things later in life for them that will help them along their way and teach them how to do things on their own and to respect nature, outdoors, and wildlife. So thanks for tuning in. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative and uh, keep hunting.